Hi, it's Face Attack. Remember a couple of uh, a couple of years ago, a year ago, I made the uh, screen switching DS. This one, where you basically, if you um, turned it on, you could switch screen, switch between the top and the bottom screen with the flick of a switch. Well, I kind of built that one. I built another one for a, a commission, and then I tried to build a third one, and it was completely failed, which is this one here. Completely failed, um, and then I just kind of just let let it left it left it. Um, after writing the blog post, I've seen a few people that had built them, um, and I was really quite eager to speak to them because um, I wanted to see how you know what kind of if they had the same problems that I had. A few people were like yeah yeah, um, I tried thin wire and then I had to go to thicker wire. Um, I tried this that and the other. I tried to put some one while putting a resistor between the two uh, signal lines, um, you know stuff like that. And then this this uh, weekend, just before the weekend, well before the bank holiday, uh, someone was like, "Come come again!" And they were like, "Oh, I built one. I've had these problems with it." And I thought, right, I'm gonna try and sit down since I've got some time, and I'll try and have a look about, just try and have a bit of a brainstorm what I can do. My my thinking was that the because these if you don't know what you do is cut the uh, this the signal. There's two signal lines. One for the top screen, one for the bottom screen. What you do is cut the signal line, go into the bottom screen, slice that off, and then you solder a wire onto there so that you can pipe in whatever um, sort of signal that you want. So you can either pipe in this, the signal for the bottom screen, or you can pipe the signal for the top screen in there, which is quite cool. Uh, so what you normally do is have a switch that um, the, the line would take off here and go to the center part of the switch. And then on the left and the right, the left and the right pins, so that we um, three pin switch, middle one for the for the pipe in, and then the other one. So it's always either taking the um, top screen, connect to one leg, bottom screen, connect to the other leg. So whichever way you switch it, it'll go from top to the bottom screen. Right, okay, so not, normally you just like, there's two test points on here that you normally solder to. Solder the wires there, bish, bosh, bash, bar, gone. So what I was thinking was, if I trace this these test points to the processor, and I can tap straight off the processor, straight to the switch, there's less likely to get um, any losses on the board because obviously think about it. If it goes from the processor, it's going to go to this test point and then to the where, where it's supposed to go. You know, there's there's they don't know what, how long. But I was thinking that I've have the same exact same length of wire on each one so that we can ha have a signal integrity. integrity. So I started tracing around the board. I'll I'll I did find the test points, but I'll have to show you on my multimeter what I actually found. So I've got meet him in continuity mode. It was quite boring. I was just literally probing all over the board, probing around this area, put a bar. And I was like, where is it going out? You know, sort of radius now. I found this point over here. Oh, there it is. Which got us just over 100 ohms. Now remember, if it was a complete direct, and I was like, how is, how is this working? So anyway, I thought, right, test it out, test it, found that point there's one obviously as well for the top screen as well somewhere around here so I tapped off them exactly the same sort of a hundred ohm reading so I tapped off them points into the switch and then here it is this is the one I think I've got a clean 100% glitch free switch because before every time you like touch the switch or you'd partially make in the switch it would glitch out so I think I've got a hundred percent glitch free way of doing it so I'll show you in game. If we can get it to work, get out of the light. As you can see, you can switch. Look at that, clean as ever. It's just just nice. Um, I'll show you because I did, and I'm thinking you're probably thinking, well, maybe. It's because I use different wire, because I use this, that, and the other. I did use, to do it in like hard mode, I did actually use some enamel super thin. It's like 0 0.025 mil uh, wire. And I did connect back to the normal standard points after I'd connected to these new ones. I connected to the switch, just that worked. And I connected back to the old standard points and I was getting really bad glitching on the top screen. It's always the top screen when the top screen is going to the bottom screen. I was getting really bad glitching. It just wouldn't work. It was like how I did it before, so I was like quite relieved. It was kind of like, you know, want to do the scientific method. 
and make sure I wasn't just uh, blowing smoke up my ass. So yeah, I'll show you now on, this is the original one that I originally built. This is, this is a miracle that it actually ever worked. And we'll try the same game again. Um, and you'll see that you'll, uh, well, I hope that you get glitching when you do the switch. Now, if you look. Not really showing up here, but off camera I was doing it before. I swear to you, it was like every time you touch the switch or you'd be partially making the switch, it would, um, you know, it would, it would kind of look a bit, it kind of look a bit dodgy. You can't really see it on camera, but it does, it does look a bit dodgy, like when you make the switch. So I'm quite reluctant to go back into this one and re redo it the new way. Um, but who knows? But I, I was thinking, you know, you kind of see it glitching at the top here a little bit. But then I was thinking, is it because I've used enamel wire? Because part of it is that when you do this, you go under the under the battery under the battery bay. So when you close it all back up, there's not much space, so it's got like super thin wire. So I'm kind of like thinking, yeah, it's good, but also like it is. Am I, you know? But like, like I said, it's just um, these new test points. I, I think I've cracked it. So basically what I do is just solder to it with super thin enamel wire and then I use a bit of clear um, UV cure resin. Just bob a little blob on top, cures super hard and you don't have a problem. Same but on the back here when you solder that wire on. And, and the enamel wire as well is dead easy to use because you can just remove the enamel, can't you? And then um, solder it and then you can just draw it to whatever length, chop it and then you can just heat it, remove the enamel and then that's it, you're good to go. I think it's a lot, a lot better, easier to use because you can just snake it along the board and it just doesn't take up any space. It's what I use on my uh, screen switching mods for the switches, on my DS Lite ones. So yeah, um, I'll write a blog post with the uh, proper um, locations of these two test points. They are, they are, you know, fairly easy to get to. They're not. I, I even took the um, DS slot off here just to um, maybe to try and see if it is under here. I was hoping it wouldn't be because you know, it would be an I did actually trace it to the associated two points on the processor, but I thought the um you know these are working right, so there's no point in getting really fine because they're really even smaller the the V's underneath the uh processor there. But yeah, as usual, blog post with the proper uh, descriptions, this that and the other. Uh yeah, so thanks for watching. Bye.